Hey, kia ora! Helen Brums here with Genealogy and History. Today we are looking at May 5th, Cinco de Mayo, so happy Cinco de Mayo. Ooh, that's right, that happened today. Whoa, so we, so ch stay tuned because we will be finding out the story behind that. Um, we're also going to be finding out about train robberies and Braille, Tchaikovsky, number five, um, solo flights, I love Lucy, and Jupiter. So are we ready to get this ball rolling? There is a lot that happened on May 5th in history, and I've just pulled out some of the highlights of the day. And some of them do include family tree things. So like our very first one, we're going to be going from 1260 to 2015 today. So in 1216, Kabuli Khan, the grandson of Genghis Khan, becomes the ruler of the Mongol Empire. There's, your family, there's the family tree connection. Um, on, in 1494, on the second voyage to the New World, Christopher Columbus sights Jamaica landing at Discovery Bay. In 1764, now this one was a little bit of a surprise for me. I, I tell you, I was surprised by some of the events that happened, especially how late in history some of these events happened I thought they had occurred much earlier so we're going to be finding out some of those and this is one of those ones that occurred really early on that surprised me I thought it would have been a little later but in 1764 on May 5th the um, Smolny Institute forms in St. Petersburg Russia for noble girls Catherine the Great Catherine the second founded the um, Smolny Institute for girls officially the Society for the Upbringing of Noble Girls in 1764, inspired by St. Sir, a boarding school for girls in France. Um, Smolny, Smolny was part of Catherine's great educational plan to raise cultured, industrious, and loyal women. And as you said, and the building is now used by, I believe it's the governor of St. Petersburg now uses the building that the school was housed in. In 1778, um, George Washington, so this is before he became president, appoints Frederick Wilm Wilhelm von Steuben, the Inspector General of the Continental Army. In 1792, Jean-Baptiste Joseph de Lom oh, hang on, hang on. Jean-Baptiste Joseph de Lombre commissioned to, was commissioned to measure the meridian between Dunkirk to to calculate the accurate length of the meter and he was an influential French mathematician and astronomer who was who was a major figure in the establishment of the new metric system in France now this surprised me that it was so early on I thought this came you know, a couple of centuries later in 1792 Delambre was commissioned to measure part of the meridian to discover a more accurate measurement of the meter after the French had decided on a new metric system of weights and measures in 1790. Despite the delays because of the French Revolution and being mistaken for a spy, <laughs> Delambre finished his part in 1797 and reported his findings in 1799. Now, I thought that the metric system um, came in like years later because I remember being in school, in primary school, um, what was I, about eight? And they had the um, this guy come into our classroom. He collected up all the math textbooks that we had. That books that we had. And these were the thick, big math. And he basically sat at the back of the classroom with what at the time was equivalent to a thick sharpie marker. And he was going through these textbooks and just putting a line, a black diagonal line, through the page that we were not allowed to learn what was in there because we were switching from imperial measurement to metric. And this was back in the um, in the 70s that that occurred. So to find out that the metric system actually came into being around the late 1700s was was a surprise for me today. In 1809, on May 5th, Mary Dixon Keys, an American inventor, became the first woman to receive a U.S. patent. Patent. Her patent for a new technique of weaving straw with silk and thread to make hats was signed by President James Madison. So that was 1809. In 1816, the American Bible Society was organized in New York. And that's still around today, too. Um, 1840, Thomas Carlyle begins his famous lecture series, The Hero as Divinity, later collected in his books on heroes, hero worship, and the heroic, and the heroic in history. 
Well, that would be really interesting to read about, um, yeah, just, just an interesting subject to go read. And that was written in 1840. Um, in 1847, the American Medical Association was organized in Philadelphia. And as we know, that is still very much around today. In 1862, the Mexican army's victory over France at the Battle of um, Pueblo during the, Fran the Franco-Mexican War. And that's, and that's how, why we now celebrate Cinco de Mayo. Um, so there's a story behind that because the Mexican army won over the French. Um, in 1865, the first U.S. train robbery occurred in North Bend, Ohio. About a dozen men tore up tracks to derail an Ohio and Mississippi train that had departed from Cincinnati. Some reports identify the train as belonging to the Union Pacific Railroad. More than 100 passengers were robbed at gunpoint of cash and jewelry. The robbers then blew the safes of the Adams Express Company that was said to contain thousands of dollars in U.S. bonds. Man, that would be a lot of money in today's thing. This is 1865. The robbers fled across the Ohio River into Kentucky. Lawrenceburg, Indiana officials were notified by telegraph of the robbery and in turn notified military authorities. Troops were sent to hunt down the robbers. The outlaws were traced through Verona, Kentucky, but were never captured. Another account of the robbery says that although the identity of the robbers were never discovered, Frank and Jesse James were suspected. Interesting. When was that? 1865? 1865. In 1870, um, the British and Foreign Society for Improving the Embossed Literature of the Blind adopts Braille as the best format for blind people. So that's been around since 1870. Um, 1877, Indian Wars. Sitting Bull leads his band of Lakota um, into Canada to avoid harassment by the United States Army under um, Colonel Nelson Miles. And he had something to do with, um, didn't he have, um, wasn't he involved, um, I'd have to go check this, but I think Sitting Bull was also involved with um, Custer's Last Stand. I have a, I have a I seem to recall that. Um, in 1891, the Music Hall Carnegie Hall opened in New York and Tchaikovsky as the guest conductor. Ooh, that, would have been, that would have been a really cool concert. Um, in 1893, there was the Panic of 1893 causes a large crash, crash on the New York Stock Exchange. It was caused the day after the collapse of the National Quarter, Cordage Company on May 4th. It was part of the then largest economic crisis to hit America that triggered a depression that lasted until 1897. Loans were called in across the country, 600 banks failed, 15,000 companies collapsed, and unemployment soared to 25%. I thought, huh, the economic system goes in ebbs and flows. Look at all the crashes we've had since then. It's very interesting to think that, you know, it was before the 1900s and before the big um, depression of 1930s. Wow, you know, it's been in ebbs and flows. Um, on May the 5th of 1900, the Billboard began weekly publication. And of course, we all know the Billboard has the um, the top, what is it, Billboard Top 100, Billboard Top 10 of music and all of that. Um, in 1908, the Great White Fleet arrives in San Francisco. And I thought, the Great White Fleet, hmm, this sounds interesting. In the last years of his administration, President Theodore Roosevelt ordered a massive U.S. Navy fleet to circumnavigate the globe to project American naval power. The fleet, their hulls painted white, was meant as a showpiece of American goodwill and was to make courtesy calls at a number of ports globally. Great excitement followed the arrivals of the White Fleet. In Australia, when the fleet arrived in 1908, they were greeted with huge receptions of people. They too liked Australia, and over 200 of them deserted while in Australian ports. That's a lot of people. <laughs> the fleet returned to the United States in 1909, um, apart from displaying to the world the rising naval and military power of America. The visits led to improvements in formation, uh, led to improvements in formation, steaming, coal economy, and morale aboard ships in the naval fleets. So, there was some good that come out of that. Um, in 1917, so this is back during world, this is back in World War One. Eugene Bullard, who was born in Columbia, um, Georgia, gains his pilot's license from the Aero Club de France. He was in front. And becomes the first African American military pilot, and he was serving with the French Air Service. 
and apparently he's there's a there's a really cool story about him um about how he stowed away on a german ship he ended up in scotland he, he basically did this traveling around before he ended up in france where he got his pilot's license um it's a very interesting story in 1920 u.s president woodrow woodrow wilson makes communist labor party illegal um in 1921 perfume chanel number no. five was released by the fashion designer coco chanel you know it's been around since that long it's that's that's a that's a hundred years today. So a hundred years today, I just realized that 1921, 2021, hundred years today, the perfume Chanel Number no. Five was released by fashion designer Coco Chanel. That is cool. I don't think I've I don't know if I've ever had a whiff of Chanel Number no. Five. I might have, but not knowing it. But I've never had the bottle waved under my nose. Um, in 1930, Amy Johnson takes off and becomes the first woman to fly solo from England to Australia. On May 5th, 1930, she left Croydon in England and landed in Darwin on May 24th. That's a long flight. Um, in 1936, Edward Ravenscroft patterns the screw-on bottle cap with a poor lip. That's a really handy little thing. Um, in 1944, Mahatma Gandhi um, was freed from prison. In 1948, the first squadron of jet aircraft aboard a carrier. So up until then, there had been prop planes on board carriers. Because I saw that and I thought, oh, hang on. They had carrier aircraft around before then. Because they had all the, you know, go back to the movie Tora, 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 um, with the planes taking off from the decks and everything there. And then I suddenly thought, oh, hang on. Jet aircraft, not propeller, jet aircraft. So the first squadron of jet aircraft was aboard a carrier. It didn't tell us which one. Now this this has to be this has to be one of my favorite ones. This is this is one of my favorite ones only because I absolutely adore um, watching this particular show. The episode I Love Lucy called Lucy does a TV commercial also known as Vita Meta hang on Vita Meta Vegemin <laughs> premiered on this day in 1952 garnering 68% of US television viewers. That's massive. I don't know how many people had TVs in 1952, but to get 68% to watch her do her TV commercial on the Vita Meta Vegemin episode. I love that. It's one of my favorite episodes. I mean, I love Lucy shows. I absolutely adore those shows anyway. They are um, they are um, absolutely hilarious. They're, they're just good, clean comedy, and I love them. And this has to be one of the top episodes that I absolutely love. Um, there's many ones that she's done that I love as well that are up there with the with the Vitamita Vegemin. Thank goodness I'm not taking any right now. <laughs> I love that episode. Um, and the candy one and the chocolates where they're eating the chocolates and putting them under their hats and all of that sort of thing. Um, I would be the same way. It's chocolate. I would be the same way. Okay, so back to, back to the thing. In 1961, on this day in 1961, Alan Shepard becomes the first American in space aboard Freedom 7. I have seen that capsule of Freedom 7. Um, it was on display in the Udvarhalsi, um National Air and Space Museum, at the, the Udvarhalsi, um portion of it out there at the um, Washington Dulles Airport. That's a small space. That's a tiny tiny space. There is no room for moving in that thing. Um, it just, and it amazed me when I saw that capsule, and I've seen other ones since where they had two or three people in them. Those are tight spaces, tight quarters. Um, and I don't, th and even though I've seen Apollo 13 several times, seen that movie several times, I don't think you really appreciate just how small those spaces are until you actually see one of them in a museum and you can actually look inside and you're like that's small They're, those are tiny tiny spaces um so i would be claustrophobic in those so i my hat's off to all of the astronauts that that successfully do their missions and everything else in those tiny cramped quarters i mean that's just that's just that's just blows my mind okay in 1979 masterpiece radio theater begins broadcasting this one surprised me i thought it had been decades earlier because radio has been around for a lot of years 
but to have Masterpiece Radio Theatre begin broadcasting in 1979, I was like, wait, what, really? Um, I would have thought that it would have been back in the 30s or the 40s, somewhere around there, but nope, 1979. Also on this day in 1979, Voyager 1 passes Jupiter. Um, in 19, and this one surprised me as well, that it happened so late, because I thought that this had been around for a little longer. But in 1986, on May 5th, 1986, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Foundation announces Cleveland, Ohio, was chosen as the site of the Rock and, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Museum. I thought it had been around a lot longer than 1986. So those, those two actually surprised me. In 1988, Eugene A. Marino was installed as the first African-American Archbishop. I love firsts. Um, in 1997, Married with Children's final episode was played on Fox TV. I loved that show. That was a that was a really cool show. I mean, they had some just crazy stuff in that thing. Um, ideals of marriage and all of that sort of thing. And yeah, that was just a really cool show. Love that marriage. Sorry, it's going through my head now. In two, uh, May 5th, 2000, there was a conjunction of of the Sun, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and the Moon. Um, and the five naked-eyed planets cluster together in the sky within a circle of 25 degrees or less in diameter once every 57 years on average. Um, the next time this will, it will happen is September the 8th, 2040. The 2040 grouping will include Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and the crescent moon. So that's kind of cool. I mean, I've been watching, I was when I was in Mesa for the five and a half months, I was watching Jupiter and Saturn every night. I'd go out there and go, well, there's Jupiter, there's Saturn, and there was Mars. And you would watch them. And I think it was two or three times while I was there, you would have the um, Jupiter, Saturn, and the moon would create a triangle. Um, a full moon would create a triangle. And it was, happened a couple of times while I was there. And also while I was there too, it was when um, Saturn and Jupiter crossed paths as well. Um, that happened as well but I could always look up and I knew where Mars was but I actually watched when I first got there and saw this bright um, light in the sky I thought that doesn't look like a, a star because stars do twinkle and so I got out I have an app on my phone and you take it out you open it up and you point your camera in the direction and it comes up with all the stars and planets and puts the names on them and it told me that that was Jupiter and then I saw this little dot just below it and it showed it was Saturn and I basically watched them move across the sky from east to west um, every night for five and a half months and then Mars started just below the horizon and I watched it come up over the horizon and um, yeah, while I was in Mesa and, this, and the night skies were clear it was beautiful for watching there were some cloudy nights but yeah so I remember those but that would be awesome to see if you can see it with the naked eye you know so the next one was September the 8th 2040 when you will see Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn and the crescent moon all in the sky in one night in a cluster and our last one for today, in 2015, scientists announced the discovery of the oldest and most distant gal galaxy known to man. It is EGS-ZS8-1. And that is our wrap-up for today on this day in history, May 5th. Um, there is a lot of information in it. There was a lot to choose. I mean, May 5th seems to be a very popular date for some reason with history. But all of this stuff happened on May 5th. Um, if you would like, um, you know, who in your family tree witnessed or participated in these events? Did anybody we mentioned today, are they actually in your family tree? If you would like help discovering who is in your family tree, if they had a play in history, um, if they are a historical figure, what rumors do you have about your family tree that you want clarified, then please go to HelenConnects.com. The link is in the description of this video, and you can set up a free consultation where we can talk about your family tree, give you some hints and tips to help get you past some obstacles you may have. And um, it's always a pleasure to be able to help people with that. So have a super fantastic sparkling day and we will catch you guys tomorrow from May 6th. Hey, Guanera.